everyone. It's me, Terry of the Yarn Joy Podcast. Welcome back to another tutorial. In today's tutorial, I would like to share with you a few tips that I have found when making granny squares. Okay, so uh, I thought I would go ahead and uh, just start making a granny square. I want to make a, a four round granny square, but it's, I'm going to do two rounds in one color and then I'm going to change colors and then do the remaining two rounds in the second color. Okay, so I have two colors of yarn and you need going to need a crochet hook and a pair of scissors. Okay. So I'm going to, let's see, I think I'm going to use green for my first color. So I'm going to attach my yarn onto my hook with a slip stitch. And I want to leave not a real, real long tail. I want to leave, you know, kind of a small tail because I'm going to work over that tail uh, in my first round. Okay. So I'm just going to make a slip stitch. However you like to make slip stitches onto your hook. Okay. And then I'm going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think I'll bring you in just a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to take my hook, insert it into the very first chain of those chain of that chain four, just like that, and I'm going to slip stitch, and that's going to form a ring. And I always try to kind of keep my finger in there in the hole while I'm doing the slip stitch. That way it'll keep that ring open and then I can work into it. Okay, so now I'm going to chain up three, which is going to count as my first double crochet. One, two, three. Okay, and then I'm going to start double crocheting into that ring, but I'm going to work over this beginning tail. Okay, so insert my hook into the ring and do a double crochet and like I said I'm going to go ahead and work over that starting tail make one double crochet okay now I'm going to make one more double crochet because if you are familiar with granny squares you make uh, sets of three or groups of three double crochets okay I'm going to use a chain two for the corner between my, my, I call these shells, these three double crochets. So chain two, one, two, and then I'm going to do three more double crochets into that loop, working over that tail I'm holding there together. One, two, okay. And then I'm going to make two more because I want groups of three double crochets. Okay, now I've got another corner to make, so I'm going to chain two, one, two. And then three more double crochets, making my next shell. One, two, three. Okay. Another corner, so chain two, one, two. And then three more double crochets into that ring. And I'm still working over that tail right there. There's my little tail. Okay. And my last double crochet. Okay, so here is my, that. so working over the tail, that is my first tip. Um, now I can trim that off. I'll do it later though, but I worked over that beginning tail. And so I'm just going to push it back to the back and then I'm going to continue. Okay, so that's my first tip. And then my second, next tip that I have discovered is remember when we're, say, okay, so when we're doing the corners of the granny squares, those are two chain corners right chain two chain two chain two and so now before i where i need to finish this round i need to do a chain two that corner and then ordinarily i would do that and then i would uh join with a slip stitch into the top of that chain three because the chain three is our first double crochet right so this is what i would normally do or this is the way i always used to do it <laughs> so i would chain two and then I would do a slip stitch into the top of the chain three. Go ahead and do that. And see, that completes my first round, okay? So that, that chain two, that's that last corner. Okay, so with granny squares, you don't work into the top of these double crochets. You work either in the corners or in the spaces between the three double crochet groups once you get, you know, more of them when the, when it gets bigger in the next rounds. And so um, when you're when you're starting, you need to start into a corner or a space, right? Well, I'm on the top when I joined into this chain 3, I'm at the top 
of that first double crochet. So I would either have to chain up three and then turn my work, okay? So that way I would be in the corner. See, I could do that. One, two, three, that's like the first double crochet of my next round. And then, but I wanna work into that corner. So I'd have to turn my work and then I can work into the corner, okay? Which would start my next round, okay? But I don't necessarily, uh, I mean, usually when I make granny squares, I don't turn my work every round of a granny square. I just stay working on the same side. I've always done that. And I, you know, I don't do it unless a pattern specifically tells me to turn my work for every round, okay? So, what I used to do is I would slip stitch. I would have to slip stitch in these remaining two stitches to get over into this corner right there to start my next round because I wanted to start it in a corner. Well, um, I have found, and now this is not my invention. I've done, I've seen this, this tip in different patterns before. And, um, uh, it finally clicked to me like, oh, well, that's the way I should do the corners of the granny squares. <laughs> so let me show you. Now, it's only the last corner because it's the, you know, it's like right before you join, you know, before you go to the next round. So the other, the normal corners, you can still chain two or whatever, chain three if you're doing three in the corner or however many spaces, how many chains you're doing, you know. Okay, so I'm going to pull out these that chain two and go back to where I was before, before I made the corner, okay? And then, um, so let's take a brief pause here and I wanna talk about chain uh, stitch equivalents, okay? So, you know how you chain up three in a pattern and they'll, a lot of the patterns will say, well, that chain three is counts as your first double crochet, right? Okay, so that's because the height of a double crochet is equal to three chains. Okay, well, if you're doing a half double crochet, they'll say chain up two and then make a half, and that counts as your first half double crochet because chain, two chains is equivalent to a half double crochet, the height. And then with a single crochet, it's just a chain up one. They'll say chain up one um, and then do a single crochet in the same space, or they'll say chain up one, and then that chain one is your first single crochet sometimes, okay? So that is your stitch equivalence. Chain one equals a single crochet. Chain two, two chains, equals a half double crochet. And chain three, or three chains, equals a double crochet. Chain four would equal a triple, okay? Okay, so since we're doing two chains in the corners, then that's equivalent of a half double crochet, right? So, when I'm doing my last corner before I start the next round, instead of doing a chain two and then join into that chain three space, okay, I do a half double crochet. And so, I do a half double crochet equivalent to chain two, and I work it into the top of that chain three, just like I was joining it with the slip stitch. But I, that's where I put my hook, but I make a half double crochet. Looks kind of weird, but it works. <laughs> and so when you're, what happens is when you make that half double crochet, your hook is in the gr a great spot you know, it's not going to be on top of that chain three. It's not going to be over here. It's going to be right kind of in the middle of that chain two corner. And so that's exactly where you want to be to start the next round. <laughs> when I figured that out, I was like, oh, because I always thought I I've seen that in patterns before. And I was like, why are they doing that instead of just chain two and join? And it finally clicked, <laughs> light bulb come on. Oh, that's why they do that. And that works good. <laughs> so I am I try to do that now. I'll try to remember to do that every time I do granny squares now. So I did a half double crochet into that chain three spot. So that leaves me in the perfect place to go ahead and now start round two. And I'm doing double crochet, so I'm gonna chain up three. So one, two, three, okay? Now, uh, to complete the three double crochet um, shell, okay, that I need to work into that um, corner, I just do two more double crochets right into that hole that I created there when I made that half double crochet. 
Isn't that cool? <laughs> okay, <laughs> I think that's just great. Let me get some more yarn here. Okay, so now I'm not gonna complete this corner. I'm going to complete it when I come back around, okay? So I'm just gonna move on and go into the next corner. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna chain between my chain, my shells, okay? So I'm gonna just do a double crochet right into the next corner. And I'm gonna do three of them. That's my first shell. Okay, so there's three of them. Okay, now I gotta make a corner, so I'm gonna chain two, chain two, and then I'm gonna do three more double crochets into that hole. So one, two, three. Okay, now I'm going on to the next corner. So I'm gonna do three double crochets. One, two, three. Chain two and then three double crochets into the same corner. Okay. And then go to the next corner hole right there. <laughs> and then I'm gonna do three double crochets. Chain two, and then three double crochets. Okay. Now, I'm back where I began, where I was beginning, I mean, I'm back at the beginning of the round and uh, the beginning corner. And remember, we put three double crochets in there to begin with. So we need to do three double crochets into that beginning hole. One, two, and three, okay? So there we are at the end of round two, and that's when we do a, um, the corner chain section that's going to close off that round and we will be finished with round two. So now I'm getting ready to start round three and now and, and I'm going to do the same thing with that half double crochet. Okay. But I also want to change colors. Okay. Cause I want to do two rounds and then I'm going to do two rounds of the next color, which I'm going to use this hot pink here. So I'm ready to cut my yarn. And I want to leave a good tail because I, I'm going to connect the two yarn colors together. Okay. And see, I have not made the uh, chain two. I haven't closed it, closed out, you know, that second round yet. But I want to leave a good tail. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to take my second color and I'm going to put my granny square on one side with my tail coming out here. See that? And then I'm going to take my new color. I always like to put it in front of the original, you know, the new color in front of the old color. Okay. Okay. Now here comes the next trick for joining or joining us another color onto your granny square. Okay. So I'm going to make a magic knot. In my previous tutorial, I was, I showed you how to make a magic knot. So if you are uh, still unfamiliar on making the magic knot, you can go to that first tutorial and, um, you know, practice making a magic knot until you get, com you feel confident in making it. Or, I mean, I'm going to show you again here. But anyway, like I said, I do have a, a separate tutorial just making the magic knot so you can practice that. Okay, so I'm going to leave my hook in the yarn, in, you know, where it needs to be. I'm going to leave it, that loop around that hook. So that kind of um, holds my space and it kind of holds the amount of yarn that I need to make that half double crochet join that we're going to do in a minute. Okay, so I like to leave my hook in there. Okay, I'm going to take my new tail and I always like to do this, this end first, and I'm going to go make the magic knot. So I'm going to go under the green, okay? And then I'm going to go over both of them to make my, my loop, like I'm tying my shoe, okay? Under the loop and push my yarn through, so just like I'm tying my shoe, just like that. See that? Here, let me zoom up, and then I'll get in the frame here. Okay, see what I did? Okay, now ordinarily, I'm just I would just pull it, tight but what i want to do is i want to make that knot be as close as i can on this side of that stitch okay so it'd be if you just watch me it's probably easier to watch me than me try to figure out the words to describe this <laughs> but as i'm pulling it tight i'm moving that knot up as close as i can okay 
underneath that stitch, okay? It doesn't have to, you know, I mean, just as close as you can get it, okay? So now I'm pulling it tight, okay? Now I'm gonna do the other end. So now I'm gonna get this one and I'm gonna do the same thing I did. I'm gonna go under it, okay? And then I'm gonna do go back over both of the both of them to make a loop with the green. Okay. The pink there. Okay. Like that. Make a loop with it. And then I'm gonna tuck it under the green because that's the loop I'm making is the green. Okay. This this pink is just going through that loop. Okay. So here's my work. And now as I'm tightening up, uh, I'm gonna pull on both ends of the green to tighten it up. But as I'm tightening it up, I want to try to get that knot down as close as I can to that other knot, okay, before it gets tight, okay? You just work with it. The more you do it, the easier it'll get to do. But I'm just trying to move that knot down as close as I can. It doesn't have to be right next to it. And I'll show you that in a minute. But I want to try to get it as close as I can to that knot, you know. Okay, now I'm going to pull it tight. I have to hold both of the greens to pull it tight. Just like that. Okay, I'm going to try to get it down there further. Okay, pull it tight. Okay, now I'm going to, I have to hold the both colors, you know, one in each hand. So I'm, now I'm going to hold the working yarn, the pink, and then hold where I've got the hook, and I'm going to pull them together. And when I do, the, the knots are going to go together. See that? And now I want to pull it really snug. Okay, so I did that. Now I'm going to get my scissors, and I'm going to cut off these loose tails, okay, the short one, the short tails, and I'm going to cut it real close to the knot, okay? Let me get the other one, the green one, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut it real close to the knot, but don't cut the pink yarn. <laughs> okay, there you go. So there is my magic knot, and it's okay that there's a little space there, that's fine, because that's gonna be taken up with that half double crochet that we're gonna make to close in that corner, okay? So now I'm gonna get my yarn ready to work with, and I'm going to yarn over, insert it into the top of the chain three, just like we're going to make, you know, make that half double crochet corner trick. And then I'm going to pick up the new yarn and bring it through, okay? And then I'm going to pull, you know, finish my half double crochet, okay? Now, the knot is like, it's like back here, back kind of behind the where that chain three is. And even if it ends up, when you do that, the knot is like further up, like in the in the corner space, it's fine because you're gonna work over that area and you won't see that magic knot, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and start round three. So I'm gonna chain up three, one, two, three, using my new yarn color. Now I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, okay. Okay. Now I'm gonna do two double crochets into that corner that will finish my three double crochet shell. Okay. Uh, oop, let me get my more yarn, the ball's rolling around. Okay, so now I'm going to continue with round three of my granny square. When I get back around over here, I'm going to finish up that corner, okay? So I'm not chaining in between uh, I'm only chaining like where the corners are. Okay, so I'm gonna go into this hole right there and I'm gonna do three double crochets. And I'm gonna do this a little bit speedy because I wanna get around to the other corner. Okay, now I'm gonna work into the corner. So I'm gonna do three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets to make that corner. Okay, chain two, three double crochets. Oops. Okay, now I'm gonna go into that side hole with three double crochets. Now I'm to the next corner, so I'm gonna do three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochets. Oops, back in there. 
three double crochets to finish that corner. Okay, I got our side three double crochets to do in that side hole. One, two, three. And then three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets into the next corner. Chain two and three double crochets. Okay. And one more side, so three double crochets into that side hole. Okay, now I need to finish up the very first corner, right? Because we, we started with one three double crochet group, we need to do the next one. Okay, so three double crochets into that beginning corner hole. One, two, three. Okay. Okay, so now... Um, we need to make the next corner. And so uh, instead of doing chain two in the corner, I am going to do the half double crochet into that top of that chain three, the beginning chain three, because now I wanna go on to my fourth round, okay? So half double crochet, so I yarn over, insert my hook into the top of the chain three, pull it through, and then yarn over and all go under all three loops. And that will end you up right in the corner of that corner <laughs> where then that way you don't have to turn or you don't have to slip stitch over to the next hole you just chain three and then do two more two double crochets into that same hole there in the corner okay and then you just continue with round four so in round four you're going to have two of the three double crochets clusters on the sides because you have two holes that one and that one and then you'll get to the corner where you do three double crochets chain two three double crochets like that and so then you finish your round and when you get to finish uh, finish that fourth round if you want to uh, change colors again you can do the same color change like I did um when I change from the green to the pink, you can do the same thing. Um, I, the ones I am making is, um, I'm working on this um, granny square blanket, and I just made um, a bunch of four, four round grannies, and with two, you know, just two colors. And when I finished it, see, I did not finish the corner because I'm getting ready to do the main color and then join the, the, uh, squares together to make this granny square blanket right here <laughs> let me lift you up see the granny square blanket and i'm going to do a join as you go uh, to join these squares together so in my next tutorial that's what i'm going to do i'm going to show you how to um, join these squares together with a join as you go method this will be my new new favorite join as you go method <laughs> but anyway Back to this square, I'm just going to pull my yarn up here, and I'm going to show you the back side, and look, there was the beginning tail. All I have to do is snip off that little piece that's sticking out. You can see that little piece right there in front of my fingernail. And then where we changed colors, there's no ends to weave in. No ends to weave in. Yay! <laughs> and I mean, yeah, you might see the knot, but I mean, if it's a, if it's a scrappy blanket... You know, it really doesn't matter. You're going to see little imperfections, you know, here and there if it's when you're changing color. And if you did, if you um, were not changing color and you had to just uh, uh, use the same color but join a new color, you know, like if you ran out and got to join the new color, you could do the same thing. And if it was the same color, you wouldn't even see that little place there at all. So... Anyway, I'm real happy with it. It if it, if I can if it can save me from having to weave in a bunch of ends. I mean, I wouldn't even mind changing color each round on a granny square. I wouldn't have like six or eight ends to weave in <laughs> if I did it that way. So I'm very happy with it. And like I had mentioned in the magic knot tutorial, I have never had a magic knot come apart 
in any of my projects before. Uh, I'm not going to guarantee 100% guarantee that it's not going to, but I mean, I have never had one come apart and I am very um, confident in using them. I don't mind using Magic Knot uh, that uh, skill. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go. I hope this helps you um, as far as a, little, a few little tips that might make granny squares easier to do or quicker. Um, and I hope so. I hope you enjoy the tutorial and then come back for the next tutorial and I will uh, show you how to join these squares together into a blanket in a join as you go method, which is great. So um, stay tuned for the next tutorial and until then, have a nice day, and we will see you in that next video. Bye-bye.